What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode, this is episode number 89 and we start today's episode off here with some transfers for Danny Rose and also seeing that PEC's Waldy Dutch side are going to match the £6 million counter offer for Rose we asked for in the last episode and Derby County and Granada have now also joined the race for Danny Rose alongside PEC's well and also Athletic Bilbao as well so now four teams are battling it out for Danny Rose's signature as we are asking for £6 million each time and also as well transfer came in here for Loftus Cheek from Hamburg, which of course we reject, which was uh, £9.5 million. Pounds. And also another bid for Danny Rose. Now a fifth club decides to join the race for the left-back signature. We want to again ask for £6 million pounds, though, and we shall wait and see what Swansea say when they come back to us. And uh, following that as well, you can see right here, Bilbao have come back to us uh, regarding Rose. Just like PEC's well, we asked for £6 million pounds in the last episode. They do come back and say that is fair game. And also Southampton came back to us regarding Stephen Corker as well. We say we want £5.5 5 million pounds for the defender, and we shall wait and see what Ronald Koeman says because Corker is a pretty decent squad player here he may not be growing but I think setting him for anything under his valuation would be a pretty bad deal for us so they come back and say five million pounds what do you think and uh, we shall stall it for the time being and have a think about it but uh, still following out we see that uh, PEC's well have indeed won the race for Danny Rose for six million pounds a really interesting one this one because out of all the five teams going for Rose's signature that was the one I thought he probably would say no to because you remember with Danny Rose he turned Turned down two chances to leave the club last season to have, um, to uh, to Torino and Real Batiste. That was the other club to Torino and Real Batiste. And I was thinking that maybe it's because he doesn't want to relocate again. But I would have thought maybe this time, you know, Athletic Bilbao, very decent La Liga side, or Swansea, you know, staying in the Premier League, or Derby County, staying in the country, you know, maybe he'll take one of those three offers. I didn't see it being PEC's well for some reason. I don't know why, but uh, he says no. Uh, sorry, he says yes even. And uh, he is going to PEC's well for £6 million as Rose leaves the club. Uh, as does Stephen Corker as well, we decide to accept a £5 million bid for Corker, and he is going to go to St. Mary's. So that's totally fine for me because Corker is a decent squad player, and he always has been since we signed him from QPR but he never grew any ratings he's on pretty high wages or he was on pretty high wages and Tommy Hoban has just come back from three years out on loan from Watford and he's been doing really well whilst out on loan at different clubs the most recent loan spells at Upton Park and he's progressed really nicely he's up to a 76 overall now he's continued to grow he's younger than Corker he's on lower wages than Corker he's growing Corker's not so Corker going and having faith in Hoban as a new backup centre back in my opinion is probably some smart business there but uh, still falling out putting some bits for Luke Shaw there so how about that we just signed David Alaba and maybe Luke Shaw could join a club as well we put a bit of 17.5 million pounds we shall wait and see what Louis Van Gaal says uh, plus Brendan Galloway as well and we shall wait and see what Louis Van Gaal says before going to the first game of today's episode here against Chelsea away at Stamford Bridge in his early days at Bayern Munich they threw him in really great faith in David Alaba there and he's not let anybody down has he no he, if he plays at left back he gives you wonderful pace and energy of that side and I think that's probably where he'll be playing here. And speaking of David Alaba, Martin Tyler and Alan Smith would discuss him pre-game as he comes in to make his debut here against Chelsea away at Stamford Bridge. He is going to be taking Danny Rose's old number, the number three, and he will start in that left wing back role as well. I have a lot of faith in David Alaba, you know, I really do. And you saw the bids for Luke Shaw there. As we put in the bids for Luke Shaw, he will be a backup left back if he does come in. But David Alaba, if we ever want to play him out of position, I've said many times before, the guy can literally play anywhere. So I think Shaw coming in wouldn't be a bad piece of business for us and uh, possibly uh, relocating Alaba to another of position if we want to do so. Still, we take on Chelsea for the first game of today's episode, first of, uh, first of only game, I should say, in today's episode here away at Stamford Bridge. And the first chance to fall to us in the seventh minute, and the first goal will be scored by us as well. Conor Plianka was played forward, and the shot was well saved by the Bosnian goalkeeper Begovic, but it dropped down in the centre to William Carvalho, and the Portuguese holder midfielder turns in the rebound and makes it Chelsea nil, Watford 1. So Carvalho won us the ball back whilst the uh, play was uh, in Chelsea's favour around the edge of our area. They looked like they were going to go for goal and get themselves a chance but Carvalho makes a great challenge storms forward and joins the counter and gets the goal as well to wrap off the move and make it 1-0 to Watford so Chelsea nil, Watford 1 Chelsea had a couple of great chances here through Marco Marine but uh, first his shot went wide in the post and then that second one hits the post and it was still 1-0 and in the 28th minute they had another good chance here to equalise once again Marine is pulling the strings finds Paulson through to Salah and just watch this he rounds uh, Butland he takes it around and thinks he's going to score gets the shot on target beats the first defender but Nathaniel Klein positions 
himself on the line and heads it off the line and keeps it at Chelsea nil. Watford 1. So a fantastic piece of defending by Klein there and it was still 1-0. In the 35th minute, Neymar almost scored a fantastic solo goal as well. A couple of really nice skill moves, gets himself inside and goes for goal. But Begovic makes the save and eventually it is cleared away. On the 39th minute, Mark had a good chance to make it 2-0 and extend that lead. But Loftus Cheek's header goes over to Byron behind for a goal kick. And in the 41st minute, we had another good chance to double our lead here. Loftus Cheek finds Balotelli through to Marco Ryan Taller, takes it around his man, goes for goal. But once again, Begovic makes a smart stop and Chelsea get the ball away. So at half time, it was Chelsea nil, Watford 1. What an action pack for first half though so many chances to report but we still did lead through that only goal in the first half so Chelsea you know Watford won but in the second half here Chelsea had a good chance to respond 10 minutes after the break Marco Marine pulling the strings once again having a fantastic game fix out his left back uh, Barba his teammate uh, Barba the left back who goes for goal but drags the shot wide and opposed to behind for a goal kick and 15 minutes before the end here Chelsea had the final chance of the game Hazard dances inside picks out his teammate but the shot hits the post and goes behind for a goal kick and it was how the game would finish as well final score at Stanford for Bridge, Chelsea nil, Watford won, and what a start to the season so far. Three wins out of three in the Premier League and three clean sheets as well. All games have been uh, the same scoreline, one goal to nil, first Sunderland, then Spurs, and now Chelsea away. And they also already won the Community Shield and the Copper Europe for the first time with Watford. And then following that, you know, the good news continues because Manchester United accept a bid of £17.5 million plus Brendan Galloway for the 23 year old left back Luke Shaw. So we got off from a contract and we shall wait and see what he says. So Luke Shaw is going to come in as you can see because he accepts the contract straight away and he's going to join us here just before deadline day for £17.5 million plus Brendan Galloway. And you may think it's a waste of money because we just signed David Alaba and you may be right in uh, that assumption but you've got to look at it like this. With Watford, I mean, where else can we strengthen the team? I mean, where else can we strengthen the team? Because if you look at the team, you'll see in the next episode of Squad Report and the way I've got the squad set up. It's such an amazing team. It is such an awesome, awesome, awesome squad. And I just thought that the backup left-back area, we don't have anyone that's 80 plus. Luke Shaw is 82. David Allen, of course, an 87 uh, that just came in. We may as well get him. It was a case of we don't need him, but we may as well get him. That's what I thought. So, you know, Shaw comes in and I don't know, like maybe maybe it is a waste of money. Like I'm not going to lie. We, we probably, you know, could have spent the money on, on someone else. But then I thought whoever we bring in, you know, is going to be a squad player. We can't sign anyone for the first team. There'll be a bench or a resi. We may as well get someone who is going to benefit the team in terms of cover and be an 80 plus play rated player. And that's what Luke Shaw is. And because we swapped out Brendan Galloway as well, we now have no third choice left back here. So I decided to put in a bid for this guy Cameron Purrington who plays for Sassuolo in the Serie A in Italy. Now you probably know whose regen it is but I'll tell you if you don't. It's Ashley Cole's regen. He's got the exciting prospect tag and he's the only English left back in the Serie A and I did notice as well he came into the game straight after Ashley Cole's retirement. So Cameron Purrington we put him at 2.2 million pounds. I don't mind going as high as 2.5 million pounds though and as you can see that's exactly what we do after Sassuolo rejected the first two bids for Cameron Purrington. So Purrington for £2.5 million. Pounds. Hopefully they'll accept that and he could be a pretty decent third choice left back for us. Uh, also you would have seen as well our Canadian goalkeeper uh, not Jakovic but the other one we got here is going to go out to Barcelona for a two year loan deal because we all know Barcelona are desperate for a new 65 overall Canadian goalkeeper. This is still a teenager so uh, yeah not really sure what the business sense behind that one is but fair enough we don't mind and they're also falling out of time for transfer deadline day and we do see as well Sassuolo did accept a £2.5 million pound bid for for Cameron Purrington and he accepts his contract as well so Ashley Cole's regen is going to come here to Watford two and a half million pounds 19 years old 70 overall exciting prospect tag he's been stuck on the loan list but we know he won't loan him out until January at the very earliest he looks like a really 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 decent squad player though and again as a as a third choice left back I mean I'll, I'll just say it right now if I was um if I was not signing Luke Shaw for this Watford team which we've just done I would have you know total faith in this guy being my second choice left back because he's got some really decent decent stats. He's only 19 years old. Physically, he looks absolutely monstrous and could grow into a complete monster as well at full potential. He's got some good stats when going forward too. As an attacking left back, that guy actually looks really, really decent. So in a way, it's actually a bit of a shame that we signed two world-class left backs in this window because he, I'd have, you know, I'd have faith putting a guy, you know, throwing a guy straight into the first team really at 19 years old. But anyway, he does come in. He'll be a third choice left back and, uh, you know, three left backs signed in this transfer window is crazy. But either way, we uh, do complete 
complete the deal of Perryson on deadline day, and that does end our Jan uh, our summer transfer window spending as well. So £75 million spent in this transfer deadline day. Very expensive, but I'm happy with the deals we've done, and I think they are all going to benefit the side massively, and uh, I think they will always prove to be really good investments for Watford. But that does in the episode, though, guys, so thank you very much for watching the video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you enjoyed today's episode of Career Mode, then please do leave likes. It is much appreciated. It really does help my channel out, and I'll see you for the next episode of Career Mode, where we'll be discussing a few things very soon.